Ever since the age of 13, I've always seen, heard and felt things that are unexplainable more times than I can count. I have a family history of mental illness that could be the reason as to why I had these experiences. So when stuff like this did happen, even though I was terrified, I would brush them off as just hallucinations. I am on medicine now that is really helping me and when I do have hallucinations they are far and few between. However, with all this said, this time in particular has me totally confused and thoroughly creeped out. So I was 17 at the time, my family and I had just gotten back from vacation really late and we had all agreed that a shower before going to bed would be really nice. My family is really big, there are 12 of my family, and 8 of us were living in the house. I said that I would take the last shower because I wanted to sit outside and get some time alone anyway. The only light source was one of those street lamps to light our driveway. Our house was in the middle of absolutely nowhere. It had been about maybe 15 minutes and as time passed on, an uneasy feeling started to creep into my stomach. I felt like it would probably be a good idea to go inside at this point, but when I heard coyotes yipping and howling somewhere out in the field, I decided to stay outside for a little longer and listen to them. That was when pure fear consumed everything in my body though. Not even controlling my own body, I slowly looked over to the road and that's when I saw what I can only describe as a a 10 foot tall figure with elongated arms and legs and giant red eyes gliding down the road about as fast as a, a slow moving car. This thing was really really thin, was standing completely straight up and was hovering about 1 to 2 feet above the road. I watched in horror as the thing passed by our house without even a sound. The whole time I couldn't move. A couple of minutes later I finally regained control of my body and... I ran inside. I didn't tell anyone about it other than my doctor because, to be honest, I, I just thought it was just another hallucination. Anyway, a year later I moved in with my sister and brother-in-law, and while my brother-in-law and I were on a bike ride at about 11.30 at night, talking about creepy experiences that we've had, I started telling him about the Coyote Man as that was the name that I'd given to him. As I was explaining the features of the thing, his face grew more and more confused as I continued to talk. Just as I was going to talk about the big red eyes that the thing had, his face lit up. I asked him why he was making the face that he was, and then he lifted his hands up to his eyes, making large circles with both of them. I started getting creeped out, and that's when he was like, big red eyes? I immediately started getting chills. You see, he started to explain that when he was 19, he saw the exact same thing, and right before he saw it, he heard coyotes yipping and howling as well. I was freaking out at this point because I never told anyone about it, other than my doctor, and I thought that I was just seeing things. He continued to tell me though that the thing actually chased him, and he said that he was absolutely terrified and that it was the fastest that he'd ever run in his whole life. He said that the only way to lose this thing in the end was to climb to the top of a silo. He said that he was up there for pretty much the rest of the night, just waiting for this thing to show up again, but it never did. I got chills for minutes on end when he told me that. I have no idea what that thing was, as I've never heard of anything like it since. Every time that I think about that experience, though, I get super creeped out. Like I said, for the longest time, I just thought it was just another hallucination, but hearing that story from my brother, it makes me think twice about it. If anyone has any info, input, or ideas, it would be much appreciated. So I moved in with my boyfriend into his house back in November of 2021. It's an old trailer and I knew from moving in here that there was something but didn't feel like it was harmful in any way and at first it didn't even seem like it wanted to make itself present. I have a pretty good knack for feeling out things like this as I've dealt with what I could say paranormal stuff or at least things that just make absolutely no sense my entire life. Anyways, I've had the usual things like things not being in places where I left them, 
knocking cabinet doors, sort of being open and shut that I know that I didn't open or shut, shadows and just lots of stuff that could maybe be explained away, but there's a few things that I just cannot get over. The first being something that happened a few months back. My boyfriend and I were in our bedroom about to go to sleep. I left the room to go into the kitchen to get some water. From our kitchen, you can see our hallway that our bedroom is at the end of. While I was in the kitchen, I saw my boyfriend peering around the corner of the doorframe of the bedroom looking at me. I figured that he was messing with me or something, but when I came back to the room, he was in the bed under the covers. And when I asked him why he was looking around the corner at me, he had no idea what I was talking about. Mind you, my boyfriend is not the sort of person to do this. Anyway, flash forward to yesterday, I had gone out in the morning to get some coffee and do some laundry. When I came back, all of the shoes from our shoe rack were on the floor, but they didn't look like they were knocked off. They looked more like they had all been sort of taken off and placed on the floor. I had first blamed it on our dogs, but one of our dogs is crate trained. And when I went into the living room where his crate is, his crate had been moved across the room and into the kitchen. He's never moved his crate before on his own, and I'm really not sure how that's even possible for him. Not to mention my dogs were losing their absolute minds when I returned. Now, I wouldn't have been so bothered by this if it wasn't for the fact that when we were going to bed last night and I walked into the bedroom, I saw my boyfriend peering at me from inside the closet. Only thing is, my boyfriend was right behind me coming into the room with me. I want to play it off as I'm just seeing things, but it just doesn't feel right to me at all. I plan on smudging the house this weekend, and as I've said, I've dealt with a lot of things in the past, but nothing like this. I guess that I'm just asking if anyone has dealt with anything similar, or could offer any advice in this situation. So last year, June 28th, 2021, my friend D, my other friend J, and I all went on a camping trip. It was deep in the woods in Alberta, Canada. Now, the trip was going good. It was in the middle of nowhere. No cell service, no bars, nothing. Just the way that we liked it. But we pained, listened to music, and all that jazz. And one day, D and J were both sleeping in the tent. It was around 2 p.m., and I was sitting alone outside, when I start hearing this screaming, John, John, help me, John, where are you? And it repeated four times, the same way, same spacing. Now, I'm not going to go and die in the woods, so I didn't check it out, obviously. I stayed where I sat. And when the other two got up, I explained what I heard. Me and Dee went to the river that was close by, leaving Jay alone at the tent. We came back maybe 40 minutes later and Jay is terrified. He explained that he heard the exact same thing as me, including how the pauses were. I explained the pauses when I told them both about the screaming. A few months later, me and Jay went back there, but only the two of us. On the last day, me and Jay had this gut feeling that we were about to die if we stayed the last night. I'm certainly one to trust my gut feelings and this was one of those gut feelings that you do trust. And I know it wasn't anxiety. This feeling was literal terror. And so we're going back there with D in a few days to try and figure out what the heck is going on in this place. So I suffered a, a great amount of trauma as a kid. And because of this, I can't really remember a significant amount of my life, up to about 12 years old. Recently, however, chunks of memories have been coming back to me vividly, and honestly, I wish that they wouldn't. In any case, I remembered recently an incident during which my uncle, now deceased, took my cousin, around 10 at the time I would guess, and I, at about 6 or 7, for a walk at the local park. The park was a playing field where you can play football and stuff, so the grassy area is sort of towards the middle and the walking or cycling path surrounds it. 
My cousin and uncle were talking and walking really slowly, and it was really annoying me, so I walked ahead at my usual pace. That put a good bit of distance between us, and as I walked, I approached a, a little shack, strung together out of a few sheets of galonize and a garden gate for a door. Because of the ineffectiveness of the door, you could see inside the building, and there was a mattress and some sheets and scattered belongings. As I walked by, I heard someone whistle to me. I stopped and looked around and saw who was calling me. A skinny, dark-skinned man with matted hair and tattered clothing, smoking while sitting near the back of the shack. The man sort of kept talking to me once he'd figured that I'd spotted him, trying to tell me to come inside his house, that he has something for me, to come and play with him for a while, things like that. I didn't go, not because I knew what he intended to do or anything, but because my parents had always taught me to not talk to strangers. And he was really scary looking too, so that didn't help his cause. I walked away and I heard him start cussing and stomping out of the house. He didn't get the chance to follow me, however, because my uncle and cousin had also arrived near the spot. And I think he knew that he obviously couldn't do anything with witnesses around, especially a man who was twice his size and who would probably kick his butt. I went home that day and I honestly just forgot about it. I'm 21 years old now and I'm only now suddenly remembering it happened. But I understand what he intended to do to me fully now, it only all clicked into place when my mother told me a few days ago that the vagrant who had been living by the school, there was a primary school opposite the park, had passed away and that she was happy that she did because he apparently had actually sexually assaulted a bunch of little girls. Back in the day apparently. I basically interrogated her to make sure that it was the same person and it turned out that, yep, it was. It still makes my skin crawl whenever I think about it, that I could have been his victim. How badly things could have gone if my uncle was just a few meters further back. It's crazy and sickening to think about and makes me even more scared to leave my house to be honest. Like I said, I wish that I never remembered. I'm still haunted by old memories of an ex-boyfriend that I dated for only a few months. We met online and lived an hour apart, but we clicked really fast and started seeing each other regularly. Things were going great for about a month and then one day we stopped at my place so I could pack some clothes to go stay at his place for the weekend. We walked into my bedroom and as I started packing my belongings I noticed him scanning around my room with his eyes. I didn't think too much of it, but after a few awkward moments of silence, he began to ask me some very specific and eerily detailed questions. So, do you ever move your pillow to the foot of your bed at night, and pull your blinds all the way up so you can see the stars out of this window over here before you go to sleep? I bet you use this lamp over here the most, it's the only one that I'd use. I was frozen in shock. I just stood there speechless, looking at him in disbelief. He had just described everything, and I mean everything, that I did the night before, and it was the only time that I'd ever rolled up my blinds at night and laid at the opposite end of the bed to look up at the stars in the sky. And I told nobody about that. So, how the heck did he know? The only thing that I could do next was just sort of laugh it off and ask him how he knew, but he just kind of shrugged it off and changed the subject couldn't stop thinking about it the whole weekend though, wondering if he'd been watching me. I hid my paranoia as best as I could until I got home, but I then did a, a bit of a deep sweep of my entire bedroom, looking for any sign of hidden cameras. I found nothing. I didn't have any laptops, computers, TVs, or security cameras in my bedroom that he could have hacked to spy on me with. I did have my mobile phone in my room, I guess, but it was laying flat on my nightstand that night. If he was physically stalking me, it would have been difficult for him to see me into my bedroom, as my room was up pretty high. He would have had to have watched further away from the forest too, and even if that was the case, there were some large trees in my backyard that would have blocked his view. It just didn't make much sense, and it still doesn't make any sense. I've tried to pass this off as a coincidence, but when I step back and look at the whole picture, 
There was something just not right about this guy. I vividly recall the first time that I ever spoke to him on the phone before we met. We had so much in common. Almost too much in common. From books that we were reading to very specific interests, hobbies and habits. I thought that I'd met my soulmate. Nobody has ever made me feel so alive and he swept me off my feet. Only to drop me from what I thought was heaven. He became a different person, seemingly overnight. He was a narcissist, and I watched his mask fall off. We had texted on and off for a few years after, but I've since gone no contact. I guess I will probably never know the hows and the whys, but I continue to wonder, and also look over my shoulder. This is something that happened to me almost a year ago. I was 17 at the time and I was not prepared for the terrifying encounter that I would soon be a part of. A few years ago, me and my family moved from our neighborhood home to a farmhouse in the middle of hayfields and woods to take care of my now past great grandfather who lived there. Since I was such an imaginative kid and loved being outside, I would spend all day out in the fields and the woods, every single day, and I've still done it for all the years that I've lived here. To give you an idea of the layout of this farmland as well, our house is in the front hayfield, then there are two more behind it with a creek running through and finally a couple of miles of woods behind all of that. Keep in mind that these fields are absolutely huge, like it's just hundreds-ish of acres. Anyway, it was evening and I went out to the backfield to watch the sunset, as I usually did. The view was best from there and the sunset always looked cool over the trees. I took the 15-ish minute walk on the gravel road that connects all of our land, through the gates, over the creek, past the pond and finally onto the backfield. I watched it set over the trees until I couldn't get a view of it anymore. It was starting to get dark so I decided to go back home. It was until I saw something. You see, at the other side of the field, right across from me, I saw what looked like a buck staring right at me. And while it's not completely abnormal to see a deer out there, it is odd that it didn't get spooked by me being out there. Since my mum hunts in these woods, I got my phone out to take a picture of it to show her. But the sun had basically set, so all you could see in the picture was like a, a bit of a silhouette. But that's when it started getting weird. I looked up from the picture and saw the silhouette change. It got taller. Like the deer stood up onto its back legs or something. And just stood there. Motionless for way too long. Feeling uneasy now but trying not to get scared. I casually put my phone back into my pocket and started walking home. It was getting quite dark after all and... It's just a, a wild deer, nothing to be scared of, right? So I turn my back to the deer and I begin walking. But something just felt really wrong. It's like I could feel someone staring at me or something. So I quickly look over my shoulder but see nothing. It was very dark now so all I would be able to see is shadow anyway. And I didn't really see anything until I saw it again but it was just wrong just sharing this as well makes me feel uneasy but it was still standing upright just like it was before I started walking home but now it was running straight towards me and that's when I knew that something was completely wrong this isn't normal so I take off through the first gate and get onto the gravel road screaming for somebody to help me my bare feet are getting torn up by the sharp rocks that I'm running over. Fumbling with my phone as I ran, I called my dad, who was thankfully home. I screamed at him that somebody was chasing me. And when I look back, the deer is now gaining, about half the distance away it was when I first saw it running. I can hear my dad on the other end of the phone slamming the front door open and running outside, but I can't hear or see the thing behind me anymore. It's completely dark out now, and all I see is a shadow of something getting 50, 40, 30 feet away. I tear through the creek bed as I run through it, finally seeing my house lights in the distance. 
I scream as loud as I've screamed in my entire life, the breath scratching my lungs as I do so. I'm running uphill now, not stopping once this entire time, and I finally see my dad in front of me running even faster than I am. He jumps the last gate, separating me from my house, and starts yelling, get away. When he finally reaches me, instead of stopping at me, he keeps running past me and keeps yelling. I fall to the ground, barely able to catch my breath, tears streaming down my face. After about 20 seconds, my dad kneels next to me. Did you see it? I force out of my trembling lungs. Son, I don't see anything. Apparently, whatever chased me was afraid of my dad because once he was in view, it must have run away. Now, it's been a year since that happened. I've been made fun of by most people because everyone thinks that it was just a sickly deer with rabies or something. Even my parents do, I guess, but my great uncle, who is literally an expert on wildlife, says that there's just no way that that could have happened. He says that it was most likely a bear, but a bear hasn't been seen here for like 30 plus years, so that seems extremely unlikely. Plus, I don't think bears have antlers, which is something that I distinctly recognized in the shadow that was chasing me. In the late fall of 2019, my mum decided to leave our narcissistic and emotionally abusive stepfather. She, my younger brother, and I packed our stuff up into a U-Haul and took it all to a new apartment that we'd be living in. It was like a breath of fresh air getting out of that house and into a place away from that man. For the first couple of months, everything was going normally. My mum would go to work, my brother would go to school, and I went to an alternative school that only required me to go like two days a week. This meant that I got a lot of time home alone, something that I'd eventually come to hate. So, it started off small. One day, I heard the front door open. It was about the time my mum and our brother got home, so I went downstairs to see who it was. The door was wide open, and nobody was home though. I checked the parking lot, and my mum's car wasn't there. My brother was nowhere to be found either, and so... I closed the door, went back upstairs after making sure nothing was missing, and that was it. The most common occurrence when I was home alone were the footsteps, though. If I was upstairs, I would hear someone walking around downstairs. If I was downstairs, I'd hear someone walking around upstairs in my room. It was almost like a daily thing, so eventually I just stopped trying to investigate, and only once did the footsteps come into the same room as me. My bed was against a wall, and I was laying face down facing that wall, just scrolling on my phone. It was around 3.50pm, and I'd heard footsteps on the stairs. It was about the time that my brother got home every day from school, so I didn't think too much of it. But the steps came into our room, we had to share one and stopped right next to my bed, so I rolled over to see what he wanted. When I did, there was no one there. A few minutes after that, I heard my brother open and close the front door and start up the stairs, and it couldn't have been him the first time because there's just no way that he would have been that quick. But the worst thing that happened was on this one night. Everyone in the house was sleeping except for me, and as I was laying in my bed, my eyes were drawn to the far corner of my room, right next to my bedroom door. Now, I don't really know a, a good way to describe it, other than saying that it was way too dark in that corner. Like, there was just a, a black hole in the room or something. Every time I looked into that corner as well, I nearly had a panic attack, but I managed to pull my eyes away several times only for them to be drawn back to the same spot. And there were voices too. They were all whispering indistinctly, but they sounded angry and hateful. It was the most terrifying night of my life, and I think the worst part is that nobody believed me. I got the classic response that it was just the house setting, you know, that it was just the pipes. I guess it doesn't really matter anyways. 
Shortly after, my mum, brother and I left and moved into another house, and not for the ghost-related reasons or anything. And I haven't had another experience since then, which I am very, very grateful for. So this is a story that took place in the late 70s or early 80s. So I was roughly six when this happened, I guess. My parents went on a weekend trip and returned to their home. It snowed while they were gone. But this is important for later. And when they entered their home, they noticed things were tossed and moved about. It became clear to them that someone had invaded their house while they were gone. As they looked around, they began to notice that nothing was actually taken. My grandpa had a safe in the spare room which they found opened. But there was cash and jewelry nearby but again, none of it was taken. They kept important documents in that safe and they noticed that their marriage certificate was missing of all things. Still confused, my grandpa made his way to the back door which was partially opened. He opened it and when exiting you step on a sort of back porch which extends to a large open backyard and he noticed prints in the snow immediately. It's as though they exited the back door and walked into the yard. He also noticed that the prints didn't appear human. They resembled hoof prints but seemed human in size. They lived in Illinois and they've only had small animals like maybe squirrels or deer and raccoons in the area. So definitely not animal prints. And he followed the tracks out to the backyard where they completely stopped right in the middle. Their yard was fenced in but the prints completely ended as if whatever this thing was just broke into their home, stole their marriage certificate and completely disappeared while walking or flew away. Grandpa was always a no-nonsense World War II veteran. My grandma was the same, never the type of people to play pranks or even joke about anything. But to see them so baffled and scared was something that always stayed with me. We drove to their home later that day with my dad. They lived in a smaller, all one floor home. Dad took a letter and went up to the roof to find some clues, but he found prints up there too. The marriage certificate? That was never found, but they eventually moved from the home. They lived in four other homes in that general area and experienced other things as well. In fact, it was sort of like it followed them. At one of their homes, they heard their doorbell ring at 3am. They woke up and Grandma opened the door to see a black figure that appeared human but was completely see-through. She screamed and quickly shut the door. Grandpa quickly grabbed a fireplace poker and swung open the door and this thing just totally disappeared. In the short amount of time that he opened the door too, this figure, if it was human, couldn't have gone too far. And there really was just nowhere for anyone to hide there, so that one really perplexed all of us. When my father grew up, he also experienced a lot of strange things, but I may share them another time and... This whole thing has just been a, a real mystery for our family for a long time and if you've got any theories about what any of this could be then I would love to hear it. So this morning I just got out of class and was headed home. I saw a crippled old lady begging for help along the way and telling me that she needed to get into her apartment. I helped her and took an elevator and took her up to a door. And to my surprise, the door was wide open. When I just sort of edged my way inside, she asked if I could go to a nearby shop to buy her wine and some cigarettes. She then proceeded to give her credit card to me and keys and insisted on the fact that I should leave my bag in her house. I said no thank you and even though the situation was really weird, it wasn't that that actually scared me the most. It was the inside of the apartment. You see, there were no decorations, pictures or anything. It was completely disgusting. There was some kind of chair with excrements on it and the walls were filled with cracks. At that, I got scared and took the card and the keys, tried to act normal, and then I wanted to test to see if the card was actually real. 
I went to the store and the woman said that the card, it was a fake. It was at this moment too that I decided to not go back to her house and gave the keys and the cards to the police. A friend of mine told me that she saw the exact same old lady saying the exact same things that she told me. And the scariest thing is that she saw a man bring her outside and immediately go straight back inside the apartment. The area where she's from is known for being dangerous. There was recently a shooting between drug dealers and daylight, for example. And while I can't be completely sure, I think I may have just nearly died or something. What do you guys think?